I'm happy to have on the show today, Nico Lasso. He's the co-founder of Hello Data AI, where they unlock your real estate data with AI. You were just telling me about your biggest mistake, which was selling too fast to the big players. So yes, something that we have noticed is when you're a startup, when you read the books, you are incentivized to build your MVP and hit the market and sometimes way too fast. So something we did before having HelloData.ai, we had a smaller startup and called the Enodo, and we are quantifying the drivers of real estate. And we were very excited about it, right? And every startup usually is. And what we did was going for the big players first. And it was rather simple to sell the product to get everyone interested in it, but it was not there yet. And really as a tech, like then I was a data scientist in the company. When you work on the tech, you really want to perfect it a little bit. It has to be an MVP, so you need to lower the scope to make it as small as possible, but it needs to be working before hitting the big players. With this product, did you then approach smaller clients first? We reversed in the engine a little bit, yes. So we started going for the smaller ones and then we grew back as, as we perfected it. Because then you get much more feedback and the sales cycle is also shorter, it helps. So how long did that process take to get it to where it was ready for the larger players? About two years, about two years to really be able to be comfortable getting on a car and shooting like everything is the way it should be or almost there. That's two years. So what exactly does the technology do now? So currently we're working for HelloData.ai and what we do is we've noticed that in real estate, players have access to data and they're using that data to do analysis, to inform their decisions, but they are only using the surface of that data. There's a ton of information that's untapped, that's contained in images, that's contained in text. And we're here to get that data out, to unlock it. So we have different products, but they all are centered around extracting quality, extracting the amenities from entire picture. So we can understand if it's a luxurious apartment or not. We can understand what's comparable to your building. So it's a lot about computer vision, NLP, and all of that applied to real estate to inform the seasons. It's very interesting. But what exactly got you into the space of AI, specifically in real estate? So the AI, I would say I'm someone that's very focused on decision-making. I have some kind of passion for trying to find the optimal solution to something. And back when I was at university, when I, I was coding with a couple lines of code, you can enter the parameters for your program and it just tells you, hey, this is the optimal solution for X and Y reason. And I really love that. And AI is very close to that, except it works with a blurry logic and it can tell you it's 80% of the, of a good decision compared to that optimization part of the math. Then I remember the very first time I was using AI, it was on a data set that was detecting breast cancer based on X-ray regressions, and it was the first time you run it and you get a 95% accuracy without having studied anything there, you should really great. It's not something that should be used in production, <laughs> clearly, but I don't know, it's magic, really. Yeah, it really is all those insights you get from it. So on your, what is your client, when you give them all those insights, what do they then do with that information? So they can do multiple things. First, we have decided to simplify the program compared to many startups where you build your tech, you build your algorithms, you build your APIs, you build an interface, and that's your MVP. You need to have the three blocks and you have the databases. So instead of having all the blocks, we decided to remove the front end and we only sell APIs so that we can focus on getting feedback on the logic itself on the models. And then we can build the HL on top. But what they use it for right now is they can send their own pictures or pictures that they have. Or we also get a ton of data from 
the public from the internet, from public websites. And they can send that information, some listing information about houses, apartments, and they can know much more than what's available or just anywhere else. No one has the information about exactly what's inside that living room, inside that kitchen. Is it granite countertops, stainless steel appliances? Compared to the market, is your quality 80% there or is it at 20% bottom of the market? So you can use that and people use that to do to understand investment potentials in the market and understand that basically look for the worst house in the best block because then you can renovate it and make a ton of money out of it. So it is for the investor. It's for the investors, but also um, since we have APIs, it can be used for multiple things. If you own a building, you can use our APIs to understand which, which apartments around you are your competitors. Since we are analyzing everything visually, we can, we, we get the feel of an apartment. Is it cozy? Is it like the hardwood floor with the view and the city? We can really compare apple to apples here. And so you can use it to optimize your pricing. You can use it to understand it, your, to compare, to benchmark your expenses, to know when to buy, when to sell. So yeah, a lot of things. Okay, good. So it does, it's a really fast way to get comps on what's my property worth, not just on a zip code, but the hominess level It has equivalent hominess. So therefore it'll go for this much more. So right now we have quality. We are working on the condition which are slightly different. Maybe we can do the coziness of the home as a third score for sure. Yeah, yes. So how do you see this making a big impact in the real estate field? How's it going to change? Real estate, it's been a couple of years that real estate is increasing in sophistication, similar to there, yeah, but similar to a stock market where there's more and more data available and people really want to make informed decisions based on data. And I, I do think that's the next thing to do to unlock more so that those decisions can be better. Because right now there's clearly big discrepancy. I don't know if you've followed what happened with Zillow investing in markets. They were buying single family homes, but they were missing data and they were 5% up, maybe in average, something like that. That was enough to make them close business. So you really need all the data you can to prevent that from happening. And I think that's going to be the next thing, getting more data, to, uh, demographic data, market data, all of that. Was this going to change it to where real estate isn't as much of an opportunity? And the way, reason I say that is the stock market is extremely efficient to where it's very hard to look, find those deals anymore. So real estate's more inefficient. And so you can find those opportunities and those little gems that are hidden away. But if we're making it more like the stock market, do you think that's going to change? Yes. But also that's going to come with a higher liquidity. I, the stock market is more efficient, but it's also much more liquid. So if you want to sell some, some stock today, you know, it's probably going to happen very quickly, which is not the case with real estate because of that inefficiency. And so you have a big portion, a big on the market that's not used correctly and that can be intent. It's interesting. I know that this is trying to be addressed with blockchain and that has its some negative views towards doing that now, but this sounds like a more realistic way to make it to where it's highly liquid. I do think so. I think blockchain, I think it went through some hype at some point and there are some cases where it is interesting. It's a beautiful way to store data without having any central authority. But in real estate, people are used to central authority. They are used to storing data. They don't really care if the information is available in some other place. So I don't think that's, that's a big trend there. From a liquidity point of view, I don't see many other options to really tackle the crime. You need to make more transactions happen. And for that, you need all the processes on the way to be more efficient. And I believe that for that, you need more data and data data. Yeah. The more data you have, the better decisions you can make. So what would your advice be to 
somebody with their like first tech startup or thinking about having their first tech startup? So first, something that I might not get trained for that, it's an unpopular opinion, but if you have the opportunity, maybe go for bootstrapping or at least try to start by yourself and see if you can get some value before raising, before doing anything, because people tend to use the money they are given. And so when they receive investments, that's when inefficiency seems to happen. People want to use it. They want to grow, but oftentimes they don't have the product yet. Yeah. Being frugal and efficient, I think is a big thing to aim for. Yeah. If you can test the product a bit before going out and raising capital, well, then you've already made some of those mistakes. Yes. Yeah. I think you need some buy-in from some customers and something, some MVP that works and then start making sense because our products are not going to fit with a bootstrapped system. You are not going to build a huge interface with huge algorithms, big models. If you need to hire many people, you will not be able to do that with straps. But if you can search with three, four people, you validate the idea before going further. I think that's the move now. So like with your business, what would have been the version of that? A simplified model to at least get a market fit understanding. The fact that we are aiming for APIs. We are not developing full fetch products. We want to prove that our hypotheses are correct. We want to prove that people can use it. We are working with prop techs. We are working with companies that can integrate. We can also work with big companies and go straight, meet them where they were. We can plug straight into their system. And actually people like it. They don't have to just log in into yet another platform. Or oh, they forward the, their platform, um, they're stuck out. They have data in one platform, data in another one, a dashboard in a third one. It has some very good pros too. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense because now they don't have to learn a new platform or anything. You've made a one-click install type setup. So yep. probably less resistance. There's less resistance. They still need uh, someone to integrate with the API, but many companies are used to it or the developers at least are used to it. And they get more value out of it because they take the outputs and they can inject it straight into their existing platform and it's weight enabled. So it's more value at the end of the day for them, for sure. So Nico, if one of our listeners wanted to learn more about Hello Data or get in touch with you, how can they do that? Yeah, we are always available on LinkedIn on hellodata.ai, very important, the .ai for our LinkedIn. There is also the website, which is simply hellodata.ai. And uh, we answer whatever emails uh, within the day usually. So share any questions, that is it. Thank you, Nico, for coming on the show. And thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of Failing to Success. Make sure to smash that subscribe button. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki, with Cosmic Web Design and Development, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.